Mantor Ministries presents the Mantor Guy Podcast. We may talk about football. We could mention bacon. We might reference Rocky movies. We'll probably discuss the Mantor conferences, but we'll definitely talk about how to grow in our walk with God. Here's your host, the Mantor Guy, Jamie Holden. Hey guys, welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Jamie Holden here with you once again this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, guys, today I am happy to be joined by a friend of mine, Dwayne Goodling. Dwayne is with an organization named Think Missions, which does missionary work around the globe. He also helps coordinate Light for the Lost and the Pendel Ministry Network. Dwayne has a heart for men and men's ministry, and he has become a good friend. He's a great guy who also happens to be really bad at fantasy football. I'm excited to talk with him today about a topic that is near and dear to both of our hearts. Recently, Dwayne and I were on a Zoom call with some other men's ministry leaders, and Dwayne shared about his heart to see men of God become men of the Word. It was after hearing him share on this that God gave me the vision of starting the 2021 Burning Daylight one-year Bible reading plan to help men become men of the Word. I wanted you to hear more from Dwayne about why he thinks it's important for men to be men of the Word. So Dwayne, welcome back to the Mentor Guy podcast. Oh, thank you. Glad to be here. So we're going to talk today about why men need to be men of the word. Why do you think it's so important for men of God to spend time in God's word? Well, I, I, I was thinking about this, and frankly, I think uh, I, I've always said the Bible is the roadmap to our life. Or, um, you know, for the younger listeners out there, the, the GPS, I've, I've used that one time. I used roadmap to our life in a, in a Royal Rangers class, and the kids had no idea what I was talking about. So, <laughs> But they knew it. Yes. So it's, it's either roadmap or GPS to our lives, depending on you know what age uh, you are. But, you know, we've grown up hearing the phrase, we're to be in the word, or in the world, but not of it. And, you know, for me, it took me a while to really understand completely what that means. And um, it, it means that we're to be affected by the world, but not affected by the world. And, you know, to do this, we need to know what God says. You know, we need to know how we're to act or react uh, to different things in our life. And, and without knowing uh, what God's saying, um, how are we going to do that? So um, to do this, uh, it's important to know that, you know, we're, we're sanctified by Christ. When we get saved, we're set apart. We're, we're free from sin. We're set apart. And it's a continual process in our lives after we accept Christ. And um, as we're being moved away from or separated from the world and, and more towards God and more towards Christ. And um how are we to make this movement if we don't know what his word says, yeah. you know, so it's important to know and to follow through. And uh, I was thinking a funny thing happened just really this morning. Uh, you know, we, we talk about recognizing people's voices and I had a phone call this morning and, and the phone was across the room and I saw it. I went over and grabbed it quick and I happened to see the first name, but I didn't really see the whole name. And I, I started talking to this guy and I realized quickly I really had no idea who this was, <laughs> and I, I didn't really recognize the voice. In um, I realized um, after saying something, throwing it out there to see if he uh, would answer it, I asked if he had his knee replaced recently because that's who I thought it was, and he said, "No, nah, who are you talking about?" He said, "This is," and he said his name, and I hadn't talked to this guy for years. He was a college friend of mine, and I'm not sure I've actually ever talked to him on the phone. And I did recognize his voice. So, um, you know, I, I liken that to God. Like, if if we don't know what God's word says, how he reacts and what he says about certain situations, um, you know, we aren't going to recognize God's voice. Uh, so we, we won't get a sense that something's wrong. If we hear somebody say something that's uh, maybe against scripture or a twisting of scripture, we won't pick that up unless we know what scripture says. Um, so there's a lot of different aspects of uh, why it's important to read God's word that, that I believe is important. And I think that when we're faced with major catastrophes, catastrophes in life, um, we all have this innate sense that there's a higher power, even if people don't recognize that or don't acknowledge that. And so when you look when, like after 9-11 happened, uh, churches were full. People went yeah. to church. Um, we know that when somebody is faced with a major illness or a disease, uh, a lot of times people will turn to God and ask for prayer. They certainly won't say, don't pray for me, um, because they, they have this innate sense that there is a God. And though we have that, um, 
they don't turn to the word. They don't acknowledge the word. And for, I, you know, I, I've mentioned to somebody one time before, um, they ask for prayer for something, but 362 other days of the year, 63, depending on what year it is, they, they don't, they don't acknowledge God, yeah. you know, so they know there's a God, they have a sense of it, uh, but they don't have an understanding. And, and the only way to gather and get and to gain that understanding is to, to read his word. Yeah. It's so true. And I know like one thing that God's really been opening my eyes to is the dangers of progressive Christianity and how they are taking God's word and just twisting it and saying things the Bible clearly says are wrong. They're saying it's okay and it's acceptable. And that's another reason I feel we need to know what the word of God says. We need to have conviction so deep in us that we know what God says and know what we believe that no matter what anybody else says to us, we have the strength to say, no, that's not what the Bible says, and I'm not going to believe that. Yeah, that's true. And, and we do hear that often. And uh, again, unless you know what the word says, you won't you won't recognize that. And uh, so as as a Christian or people that um, spend time in the word, you hear something be like, wait, something something isn't quite right there. And and hopefully we will know that's wrong or at least to prompt us to maybe go ask, uh, you know, a pastor or ask a Christian friend or, or read it for ourselves. I mean, preferably uh, to get a better understanding what that is. And, yeah. And, it, it's, it is becoming more prevalent in the world and, you know, through social media and that, and unfortunately in, in some church churches as well. Yeah. So how has spending time in the word changed and impacted your life personally? Well, I, I admittedly, I really struggle with memorization of scripture. Um, it's, it's always been a goal of mine to be able to recollect scripture like this. And while I can remember a phone number from 10 years ago, I, I struggle with scripture with that. Um, so I've made a concerted effort to try to do that. So um, I believe that knowing scripture is, is key. I mean, obviously being in ministry, I want to be able to minister to people, um, whether it's on the field or at home or with friends and family. Um, so I've made an effort to to be in the word more, to try to, to have more uh, memorization of it. And I've tried a bunch of different uh, Bible plans that people have given me and I've tried the the Bible app and the, the daily things that come up. It has been a great um, um, tool as well. And the different tools like that can be very helpful. And um, I'm also part of a, a men's Bible study on Tuesday nights with a group of friends. And we've all pretty much independently have determined that when we're not in the word, our life seems to be a little more out of control. It seems like we, we deal with more chaos and, and more stress and tension in our life. But when we're, intentional about being in the word and reading and coming to the Bible study and focusing on that. It seems our, our life is a little more centered. It's a little more at peace. And uh, so, so reading the word for me has meant that it's, it's meant um, being a, to, to be able to turn to the Lord in, in the word when I have need, when I have struggles, um, as I've been more intentional about spending time in the word, I've been able to recollect more scripture uh, and be able to help and minister with other people as well. And, you know, in raising kids, uh, I have two teenage sons that, uh, you know, we do a family devotional um, when we're all here together and, and trying to teach them the same thing and the value of it, because there certainly is value in, in learning and spending time in the Word. I know in my life, I've always struggled with the consistency of staying in the Word every day. And I was so proud this year. I had a 289-day streak on the Bible app. I read the word for 299 dates and I missed a day. And I was so mad at myself that I lost the streak. It's like, come on, Jamie, how'd you miss a day? Um, so like, I know like it's a struggle. A lot of men have is to being consistent with their Bible reading. So how do you avoid complacency complacency? And how do you stay committed to daily time in the Bible? Well, it is a struggle and, and, you know, we get busy in our lives and, and there's many people are listening to this now that, you lay down in bed at night and think, man, I wish there was more hours in the day. And, you know, but what would we do with those hours? Uh, a lot of times when I talk, I talk about intentionality. And I mentioned, I think earlier in this, this message already uh, about being intentional on things. And um, if you're not intentional about something, you're not going to do it. And as I get older, I tend to put more intentionality into stuff that is important to me. Uh, you know, if you're a morning person, I'm not personally, but if you're a morning person, uh, be intentional about maybe spending you know an extra 10 minutes in the morning reading the word. Okay. Uh, if you're an evening person, do the opposite. Uh, but, you know, when I was in uh, the secular world in my career, um, I used post-it notes. I had post-it notes everywhere. And if I turn my phone around, I still have post-it notes kind of all over my desk here because uh, I need those visual reminders. But 
now since I'm, I'm more out of an office setting, uh, I use reminders on my phone constantly. Uh, I'm not sure I could get through a week really well without having reminders. And, and it, that doesn't really speak very well in my brain. But at the same time, uh, they're very important for me. And I'm, I'm really big in using reminders for things. So um, if, if you're intentional about setting a reminder about reading, maybe that's something that can help you get through that to, to not get through the end of the day and lay in bed and realize, man, where did they go? And I didn't do it. Um, with Bibles, um, a lot of us have Bibles sitting around, but to get up and go get the Bible, some people don't know where it's at, but to go get it, uh, it, it takes effort. And some people just won't make that effort, but with the Bible apps, uh, different reading plans that, you know, and as we're talking, it just makes it easy. It's right at the fingertips, you know? So if you're intentional about that, if you have to send reminders or there's plans like this that will come to you that will um, help you to uh, be able to, to spend that focused time in reading the word, even in, in some short bits, which is important to be able to grasp it and understand it. Yeah. yeah. I think it's so important for men. They need to find a way. I'm not a morning person at all. If I get up and read the Bible, I won't remember a word I read. Uh, so I try and do it at night. You need to find when is your optimal time, and you need to make it a part of your habit. Um, some people are morning people. They can jump up right and early. My dad's like that. I always totally just want to slap him in the morning. Like, dude, calm down. Not everybody else is as awake as you are right now. But he can sit okay. down and read the Bible right away. I can't. I have to read it later on in the day. So you have to figure out what's best for you. And just make it a habit that you just, as much as you like get up and eat breakfast or eat dinner, has to be that much of a habit in your life. And I just really think that's something that all men really need to be focusing on. We can't let complacency continue to dominate when it comes to spending time in God's Word. It's too important. We have to know the heart of God, and that's what the Bible is. It's God's heart speaking to us, letting us know what His will is, what His way is. It's, it's the rules of His kingdom. And if we're going to live in His kingdom, we have to know what the Word of God says. Well, guys, we're going to have some more with Dwayne throughout the remainder of this podcast. But right now, we just take a quick break to share a few th quick things with you right now. So we'll be right back, guys. You're listening to the favorite podcast at Santa's Workshop, the Mantor Guy Podcast. Men of God, we can't keep burning daylight. It's time to rise and shine. Mantor Ministry presents Burning Daylight, the Godly Man's Call to Rise and Shine. This is the most important book we've released yet as we give a rallying cry to God's men to throw off all complacency and rise and shine. This book is designed to help you know what you believe, why you believe it, and how to recognize the false teaching of progressive Christianity so you don't fall into its trap. It's time we rise from our beds and shine bright to a dark world. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com slash burning daylight. No more burning daylight, men. It's time to rise and shine. Comet swears Santa never misses the Mantor Guy podcast. Subscribe on iTunes so you don't either. Hey guys, Jimmy Holden here, the Mantor Guy. And you know, so often men tell me that they can't afford to use covenant eyes. And my immediate response back is, dude, you can't afford not to use covenant eyes. For 53 cents a day, you can protect every computer, every laptop, every tablet and cell phone that you and your family own from the trap of internet pornography. I tell them for 53 cents a day or $16 a month, you can make sure your little girls never stumble onto pornography as she uses Snapchat or does any internet searches while doing her homework. For 53 cents a day, you can make sure your son never falls into the trap of pornography or even sees it accidentally while online. I say for 53 cents a day, you can protect your wife from getting trapped in the trap of internet porn and protect your marriage. And I tell them for 53 cents a day, you can help break the cycle of internet pornography that's been holding in your life. Guys, you and your family, and most importantly, your walk with God, cannot afford for you not to use covenant eyes. So head to mantorministries.com and hit the Covenant Eyes button in the upper right-hand corner to get one month of free service. Try it out. I know you're going to love it. You're never going to regret it. Guys, do it today. You can't afford not to have Covenant Eyes be a part of your life. The Mantor Guy Podcast. Santa approved. 
Hey guys, Mantor Guy Jamie Holden here. Are you looking for a speaker at your church or for your men's breakfast, or your next men's event, men's retreat, or men's conference? Well, why not bring me in to speak? God has been moving among men as I've been sharing an encouraging word of freedom and victory. We're seeing lives change, men being saved, people being set free, and guys, chains are being broken. So if your church has hurting men and women, contact me to come share this encouraging word of hope and victory to help you grow in your walk with God. Welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. All right, guys, welcome back as we continue discussing with Dwayne Goodling about the importance of being men of the word. So, Dwayne, you do a lot of work with missions overseas. How does America's lack of motivation to read the Bible equate with what you see in believers in other countries? Well, it's, uh, it is interesting because in many other countries, there's, there's millions of people that don't even have a Bible uh, that would just love to have a Bible. And uh, me personally, I have about 12 different, different versions and translations. Uh, you know, so um, even preachers in a lot of these countries don't have Bibles. Bibles. You know, they either they will prepare sermons on memory, what they were taught, or maybe a couple pages that they they pass around between pastors, and they really cherish them. Uh, they really cherish the word and, and honor the word as being the word of God, and and we've really lost that because um, it's it's really all they have. They put a tremendous value on uh, God's word, and they, and they memorize it because of that value. Um, even if they don't have a physical Bible uh, or an app that they can pull up quickly, um, they just understand the importance of it. Uh, if, if they don't have it memorized and they didn't spend time reading it, they, they wouldn't know it because they just don't have the access. And I know in Cuba, um, if, if I'm standing up, we go there and we teach. And if I'm standing up and I start reading a verse, they will inevitably finish it. Doesn't matter what it is, they will they will finish it as I'm saying it because they know the word. And if I ask for somebody, a volunteer, to stand up and read a scripture, I'll have many people standing up to read it, and and they'll find it like that. And uh, you know that is conversely, uh, conversing in the United States, where you know if you ask for a volunteer to read scripture, sometimes you have to pick somebody because you don't always get that, and if they can even find it in the Bible, and uh, you know it's it's unfortunate. I know. In Cuba, uh, is, is one of the places we go that uh, we help and we carry in study Bibles. And I've been to some of the um, meetings where we only had so many study Bibles to hand out to pastors. We didn't have enough for everybody. And we had to draw names. And it's really difficult uh, because we, we know that they don't have Bibles or they don't have a study Bible, even if they did. And when they get that study Bible, I mean, they will hug it. They will hold it close to them. And a lot of them have tears in their eyes because they understand and appreciate so much to have that. And they know we've had people come up and say, um, now that I have this Bible, I'll be a better preacher because I have the word. And, wow. and they know it's and uh, it's very uh, it, it's heart touching, uh, you know, to sense and know that there's some leaving there that are going to have to wait to next time to see if they can get one. Um, but they will share it. They will share that. In America, unfortunately, uh, as I was saying earlier, many homes have Bibles. I was talking to somebody recently where um, she was saying that she has a Bible somewhere her mom gave her. She wasn't sure where it was at, um, you know, not a Christian, um, but seeking. And, um, you know, or maybe it's packed away in a box somewhere. You know, we're not sure where it is. Um, many phones with apps, you know, certainly are helpful from where we are with things and people can do that. But in reality, it helps very little if they're not intentional about using the apps. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they have to, most of the apps out there, you have to go to, to use. You know, it's not going to be a reminder thing. You're going to have to go there, use it. So um, it's helpful having something that comes to you. Yeah, so true. Um, how do you think spending time in the Word helps us resist temptation? Well, knowing God said, as I was saying, it's, a, it's the, the roadmap of our life. So, I mean, it's going to tell us what we need to do. And, you know, the criticism I often heard from people that, that aren't religious, yeah. quote unquote, is that, well, the Bible doesn't address everything in our lives. But the reality is it does because it teaches us how we're to live. It tells us how to act and react. Uh, if we allow it to, and it will, will teach us how to react to a certain situation. So while it may not say something specifically on X, we will know through knowing the word how we should react to that X or whether we should align with it or not align with it because of that. And, you know, if we don't know what the Bible is saying, you know, how are we going to do that? So the other thing is, um, you know, the Bible has many stories of people that face temptation and Jesus faced temptation. 
And, you know, when you're faced with temptation in our life, um, how we react to it? Well, the, the Bible teaches that, teaches what to do. We should rely on the word. We can reflect the word. And Jesus used the word as his defense against the temptation against Satan. And to be able to have that um, at our fingertips to use and, and to not use it really is, is not, it's not a smart way to live life. You know, so it, it definitely would help us deal with temptation based on just knowing how the Bible showed that the people, how they did and didn't face temptation in life. And for those that didn't face temptation well, uh, King David, when he had te- was tempted and, and made the wrong choices, it showed the ramifications. It showed what happened in his life and, and uh, the consequences for his actions. And we can understand that as well. So true. Well, recently you and I, we were on a Zoom call with some other men's leaders. And during that time, you talked a lot about the need to get men in the Word. And as you, after that conversation, I just started thinking about it, praying about it. And that's when the Holy Spirit laid on my heart to start the Burning Daylight 365-Day Bible Reading Plan. I'm just going to start January 1st, 2021. Um, six days of Bible reading, one day of a devotional. It's completely free for men to use. Um, so as we close today, give the men your best sales pitch for why they should sign up and use the Burning Daylight Bible Reading Plan in 2021. Well, I think uh, mostly what we talk to should be a great advertisement for it, for the need for it to to be able to help us align with the word, know what the Lord says for guidance in our life, for dealing with uh, temptation. But, you know, a lot of times we're all very busy and we think, where did the time go? And it's a, it's a short um, daily Bible reading that, you know, we can focus on. It's intentional. It can come to you that you can look at to uh, get in the word. And um, it's a convenient way to call carve out a little bit of time each day to read the Bible. It's not one of those plans. It's like intentional to go through the whole Bible in a year. It's just to, to get in the word. And that's the, the biggest thing is to be able to get in the word and, and read it and know what he's saying. It's a great way to ensure you spend good quality time with God each day in his word. I agree. And guys, we really want to encourage you take its time, sign up for this plan. You'll get an email every day with the passages that you need to read with a link to go and read the passages. Um, Six days of Bible reading, one day of a devotional based on our theme for 2021, which is rise and shine. God is calling his men, no more burning daylight. It's time to rise and shine. And we really want, we made this plan specifically for men. Um, Personally, when I do one of those through the Bible and the year plans, I always get lost around Leviticus numbers. I kind of just, that's kind of where I struggle. So we're very um, specifically picked out passages. It's not a through a Bible and a year plan. It's very targeted for men to keep men interested and engaged and help them become the men of the word that God has called them to be. So I encourage you to go to mentorministries.com slash Bible plan. Sign up for that plan today. And on January 1st, you will get the first day of the reading of the Bible reading plan. And Dwayne, thank you so much for planting this idea in our heads at Mentor Ministries. God used you to plant the vision and we put it through the production. And we really believe it's going to reach men and help men so much in the year 2021. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to actually do it. Uh, you know, obviously, I, the Lord planted that thought and idea, and it, it was the right time and place with our with our phone call that we were having with that. And uh, you know, you made the you made it work. So um, I came up with the idea. I'm not sure I would have followed through with that. And you have the ability and the knowledge and and uh, uh, the equipment and the you know the manpower to do it there. And uh, so, thank you for taking the time and taking that to go through with it. Well, Dwayne, thanks so much for joining us this week. I really appreciate you and your friendship and for taking time today to come on the podcast and share a little bit about your passion for men to be men of the word. Man, thank you. I appreciate it. And look forward to talking to you again in the future. And for all those listeners out there this week, Dwayne and I are facing off in fantasy football. So give him your best thoughts and prayers. He's going to need them, guys. So <laughs> thanks again, Dwayne, for joining us. We'll talk to you soon. The Mentor Guy's final thought. I believe in the need for men to know the Word of God so much that we designed a way to help you do it. I feel such a strong burden in my heart to help men become men of the Word, men who daily spend time reading God's Word. And I truly believe it is vital for men to know what the Word of God says. We need to have strong convictions and beliefs. We must know what we believe and refuse to bend. And these beliefs must be formed from the Word of God. 
That's why we created the Burning Daylight 365-Day Bible Reading Plan. This plan is going to start on January 1st, 2021. We'll have six days of Bible reading a week and one day of a devotional. You can do this plan alone on your own in your daily reading time, or you can take the plan and use it with your men's group and read through it together. It's the first time we've ever done this at Mantor Ministries, and I am so excited about it. Men, you can sign up for the Burning Daylight Bible Reading Plan for Mantor Ministries today at mantorministries.com slash Bible plan. That's mantorministries.com slash Bible plan. Sign up today, guys. It's completely free. We are only doing this because we so strongly believe that men need to be men of the Bible. The plan's going to begin on January 1st. Make sure you sign up at mantorministries.com slash Bible plan to take part of this absolutely free plan. We want to say once again, thanks to Dwayne for joining us today on the podcast and sharing some more of his heart about why men need to be men of the word. But guys, we're out of time for this week. Once again, thank you listeners for giving me your time today to listen. We'd love it if you took a second and shared this podcast to your social media accounts. We'd love to be able to reach even more men and help them grow in their walk with God. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a five-star rating, and leave a review on iTunes and Apple Podcasts and Google Play. Also, we are now available on Amazon Music and on Spotify. So you can always just say, Alexa, play the Mentor Guy podcast, and she'll play the latest episode available for you there for free. Remember, guys, the more ratings review you leave, the more men can find us in their searches. Also, do not forget to visit MantorMinistries.com for information on all of our 2021 conferences, dates, locations, speakers. Um, Our newest book, Burning Daylight, is available for purchase there. You can also read the first chapter for free. And we have so many other resources available. So thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you next week for our 2020 Christmas extravaganza on the Mantor Guy podcast. Thanks for listening to the Mantor Guy podcast. Be sure to visit MantorMinistries.com to learn more about our books, men's ministry resources, and our Mantor conferences. Have you been looking for a Bible study that you can work through with your wife? Maybe you want to do devotional time with your daughter. Guys, we have the answer for you. You can buy both the men's and women's edition of Whatever It Takes for $15. This amazing deal is only available at our Mantor Ministries online store. If you go to Amazon, it is $14.99 for just the men's version. So many men are buying both versions and going through them with their wives and daughters. Do not miss this opportunity. Take advantage of this amazing deal today at MantorMinistries.com and click on the online store button. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com. One more thing before I wrap up this week, guys. You need to head to covenanteyes.com and sign up today to protect you and your loved ones from the many traps awaiting you on the internet. You know, I am a Covenant Eyes user. I just signed my 69-year-old father up and put Covenant Eyes on his phone and his laptop. I believe in it. It's an amazing tool. It helps you stay pure online. Guys, I encourage you to try it today. If you use the code MANTOR, you get 30 free days. That's 30 free days. What do you have to lose? So head to CovenantEyes.com, try it today. Like I said, what do you have to lose, guys? Yep. You're listening to the Mantor Guy Podcast. <laughs>